But even on high stakes, there are a lot of wrecks, you know, they have nines and tens and they call 100%. They even call you down sometimes here with ace king. You see these hero calls. Uh, they call you down with ace three and they just f it, you know, like I'm not going to let go of this hand. And you want to exploit that by under bluffing on the river there. Welcome back. Today I will share one very valuable tip when it comes to bluffing on rivers. It was widely requested in the comments and yeah, it's a great topic of course. And I know you guys want to see the, the fancy stuff, the bluffs and uh, there's a lot when it comes to bluffing and I was thinking how to approach it. Um, because bluffing on rivers really depends also on flop and turn and you really need to be able to connect the dots. And I think there's one tip that you can implement right away and you don't need to be a poker scientist or have a lot of experience. But if you answer that crucial question when it comes to bluffing rivers, I think you get a much better idea when it comes to bluffing. So in this video, because I'm a big fan of practicality and I want you to um, have certain takeaways and I think bluffing is quite intricate. So for that reason, one tip and one tip only, but you guys are going to implement it 100% of the time or not 100% of the time, but you're going hard on this and you really try to internalize it and then hopefully also apply that. So let's jump right into it. So I want to use this hand here that I've played against my friend Emerix. I'm sorry, Emerix, but I bluffed you here. It's hard to win pots against him. I have to admit he's for sure one of the best players in the world and always a challenge to play hands against him. So um, we have 6-5 suited here. I think flatting is fine. Three betting is fine um, with that hand here. Cut off button hijack. It's it's kind of close. It then really depends more on the blinds, but I think uh, cut off button certainly want to defend. He checks to us and I decided to bet. I think this hand, uh, we immediately make him fold hands like king, nine and diamonds. If he gives up with his pocket threes, we don't really want to check back. And then he decides for a delayed step. I think there are enough combos in his range that going to fold. And with our back to equity, we're going to have some opportunities to bluff later on. I decide to bet. And now the turn is the three in clubs. And I think this hand, we can either check back, we can bet. Uh, it's kind of dangerous because he can maybe have some slow plays um, and now then he goes for a check raise or he can have a combo draw with like jack nine and clubs, queen jack and clubs, king queen and clubs. So I don't mind checking back here and be a bit more polarized, bear in my uh, jack nine and hearts or even nine eight. But I think if I want to check back a draw, it's probably something like nine eight in, in spades or nine eight in clubs and then bet with those hands. And then with like nine, eight and spades, I'm gonna play a bet check bet line, which I would also do with my like ace four and hearts kind of hands. So having some thin value bets down the river. The reason why we also wanna be checking back some high equity hands such as six, five or nine, eight is that they really suffer if we face a check, uh, check race because we also want to bet big. I think pot size uh, should be our main strategy here, uh, which I also, executed and then of course his response is going to be check shoving a decent amount of the time and then we can't really stack off with like nine eight or six five right um alternatively you could bet small but the problem is that i think you're going to have a hard time bluffing on rivers because your story doesn't really add up like if you have ace 10 you have pocket sevens or maybe you bluff with pocket threes you want to pile in a lot of money on a double flush draw board where he can also have gut shots and straight draws if he has King Jack and Spades, or even if it's just 10x and Spades, 9x and Spades, all these hands are going to call any sizing, right? If you bet pot, if you bet half pot, even if you slightly over bet. So definitely want to choose a larger sizing here. He calls and delivers the seven and hearts. And why do I think this is a is a great spot to bluff? Not really necessarily happy with my sizing, but this is a different story. So when it comes to bluffing river and sometimes you know how it is we get to the river and we have a hand and we kind of like especially when we multi table we might have i mean in this case it's a reasonable bet and a reasonable second bear but sometimes you end up with a hand on the river that 
you know you shouldn't be there. So forget about everything that happened before. Let's just isolate it on the river. So let's say we have the 6-5 in clubs here. What's very important to consider is what are better draws we can fold out. This is so important because we're not targeting to fold him in an ace. I'm not targeting to fold him a seven, of course. I want him to fold his king, queen in clubs, king, queen in spades, 10x that check call, check call. So I want to find enough hands that are auto folds in his range. You want to attack the auto folds. That's why I also choose the two thirds sizing. Also allows me to value bet my ace nine because I think ace jack, ace queen could be in his range as a slow play, but more often he's gonna have ace deuce, ace four, ace five, ace eight. So ace nine is gonna be my thinnest value bet and I wanna choose a sizing that also allows me to value bet as thin as ace nine. And that's, that's really it. The main question is, what are the auto folds in his range? What are the snap folds, right? If he has king 10 in spades, queen 10 in spades, jack 10 in spades, 10 9 in spades, if in, indeed actually queen 10 in spades is a good bluff catcher and I will tell you why in a second. Um, but I think most people are folding these. Or if he has like ace eight in clubs, right? I think most people would call down ace, uh, any ace, but even if he has ace eight in clubs, he blocks a lot of his draws, uh, our draws. And then of course, um, yeah, all the pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks, um, or the pure 10x. So there are a lot of hands. Some of them might bluff catch, but once again, especially the king high draws, the queen high draws, uh, something like jack nine, jack eight that opted to check call. And if we look into the strategy on the flop, you see he's actually checking 50% of the time. And a good player is Amerix. He will also have a decent amount of draws in his range, right? He will also have a decent amount of ASICs, of course. But again, I focus on folding out his better hands. And here, once, here and there, he's gonna also sometimes fold an ace. Um, and that's why I'm also, I'm also not over betting or betting pot because my goal is not to make him uh, yeah, fold a strong hand. So as we can see here on the flop, he's supposed to be checking a decent amount of the time, even his king, queen spades, his queen, jack spades. If he has some like jack nine spades, jack nine clubs, you see a lot of uh, better flush draws on his range, uh, the clubs and the spades. And then of course his 10 X. And if we get to the river, we're opted to choose, opted to choose, we're opted to go for a three, two third pot size uh, bet we see that he's folding kings, king, queen, king, jack, queen, jack, like most of these hands, which are the biggest portion is range, um, or at least a decent, not the biggest, but these are a lot of hands in his range, which um, result in DV that we generate by bluffing here with our 6-5 and clubs. So 6-5, we're supposed to bet. You see one third is just too small. It gives him too good of a price or even with a 10. But let's say, yeah, we are betting 6-5 in clubs. It's also, once again, and I, I forgot this at the, at the beginning, bluffing is not gonna make you the most money, right? You see, if, if he ends up calling uh, also sometimes kings or uh, all his queens and even sometimes 10x, then of course my bluff is going to be minus EV. It might be solver approved, but yeah, it's it even wants to use the two third sizing, but it's very, very, very marginal. Like it literally makes 2.5 chips here on average in a $375 chip pot. Um, this is probably going to be 0 0.2 big blinds, 0 0.2 big blinds in a 30 big blind pot. That is not a lot guys. And if we consider some ICM here as well, right? Because we are investing a significant amount of chips, then this might be break even or even minus EV, right? And so this strategy is very volatile because yeah, he is supposed to fold some of his ASICs here, right? Uh, as you can see, I mean, once again, I would probably not bluff against the recreational, like on the, on, on here, first first rule for bluffing, don't make big bluffs here against recreationals. Um, against regulars, as good as Amerix, I know he can probably fold some 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 ASX and my main bluffs would be 9-8 and 6-5, right? You can also see how 
the solver wants to bluff these bottom combos. Like we're not bluffing a lot of king jack or, or queen jacks. Um, we really want to choose from these bottom combos. Why? Because it follows this very simple approach folding out better hands. If you have king queen here, you essentially, and you then you can see your overbet shoving all in because you want to block those ace king or ace queen com combos that opted to check. Then if you want to make him fold a big hand, you have to bet big. But my goal here, and this is more the low variance approach, is I bet two third, I know I'm folding out the king highs and the jack highs and that's it, or the queen highs. And once in a while he might fold the ace uh, ace six. I mean, against him, I think, yeah, he's going to be capable of folding some ace six. I will certainly not overbluff this spot. There's no reason to do so. I don't want to put myself in some sort of level bullshit and then I just end up leveling myself, especially against opponents that are at least as good as you are or even better. You certainly don't want to try to do something fancy just to prove yourself. Put your ego aside, make reasonable bluffs. Of course, I also want to, since I'm playing in an environment where I play against them on the day-to-day -day basis and if they never see me bluffing, then... It's a, I will have a hard time getting paid out, right? And you might have seen that on stream. People like to pay me out. So that's a good thing. Here and there, I might make some bluffs. Um, but on the other side, if you're one of the uh, the regulars who's literally never, never, never bluffing, I'm, I'm not saying you need to bluff a lot, but you need to be aware that you're not going to make a lot of money. You might make money by getting paid out more often. But long story short, try to be, fold out better hands. Uh, and and just think, okay, which better draws can he have? Which auto folds? And it doesn't need to be a shit ton of, of combos, right? Let's look into another spot where I want to show the opposite. So this is a spot where um, we play with an in-position range like this. Uh, sorry. The same spot, uh, we play similar range as we just had in the previous spot for Elmerix. He's raising something like this. This is our in position range, a mix of three betting and calling, typical GTO spot, and the board is deuce, deuce, three. So now the, the run out is deuce, deuce, three, eight, five. And on the river, this is supposed to be out of position strategy. I'm not a big fan of bluffing a lot here because you see that now it's really hard for villain to have better hands or to have snap folds. Like let's say you have jack 10 and you jam the so-called snap folds here would be ace king. Yeah, ace king, ace queen, ace jack. I don't think people double uh, call twice with king queen or king jack. So I think double barreling is good with your jack 10, for example, to make him fold king queen, to make him fold the king jack floats, to clear out equity. Um to yeah, make him fold also ace jack, right? But then on the river, he's not gonna have these combos. So yeah, he was certainly sometimes call it twice with ace queen, ace king, which just didn't three bet preflop, which sometimes should call actually here in this spot. So then you're jamming into a range that doesn't really have any snap folds. I mean, if I have ace king here, I block aces and kings, I unblock jacks and tens against a good opponent. I will certainly sometimes find the hero call. It's it's even not a lot, right? So, but you also see tens, nines are supposed to fold. Uh, even sevens, sixes. I think here with over pairs where people know, well, I have tens, I have nines, I'm essentially top of my range. They're not going to fold nines 50% of the time here. Tens, at least folding 10 to 20% of the time. And then seven sixes folding 60, 70% of the time. You're getting looked up quite often here in these spots. So, this is a spot where, in uh, comparison to the previous spot, I wouldn't like bluffing a lot if I have jack-10. We, as we see, jack-10, queen-jack, blocking jacks, block it, blocking 10s, um, blocking 9s. Like These combos want to be just pure triple barreling quite heavily, right? Because we still have 9s nines, nines better. We have ace-2s. We get there on the river with some ace-4s. So... Yeah, and of course, we're checking our ace kings and ace queens. So, not a good spot, guys. Really not a good spot here to bluff. So, I just wanted to show you those those two spots where 
when you get there on the river with your Jack 10 and you ask yourself, okay, which snap foots does he have? Then you might realize, well, it's getting hard. And again, if we look at DV with Jack 10 suited, uh, we make 22 chips in a 50, 50, uh, 560 chip pot. So the pot is 56 big blinds. So we make around two pick, big blinds. That's not a lot. It's more than the previous spot, but just because our opponent is folding so much. Queen Jack actually is way closer. Like Jack 10 is literally a, a premium bluff here. Jack 9, Jack 10, unblocking ace, queens, even that double call, right? So here, uh, I would definitely um, be very unbalanced, unless I play against very good opponents, of course, or I know that they understand the spots and... But even on high stakes, there are a lot of wrecks, you know, they have nines and tens and they call 100%. They even call you down sometimes here with ace king. You see these hero calls. Uh, they call you down with ace three and they just fuck it, you know, like I'm not going to let go of this hand. And you want to exploit that by under bluffing on the river there. Um, I actually promised you something that I forgot. So I mentioned why is queen 10 on the river a good bluff catch. So back again, guys to the previous spot we had on this very board, ace, 10, seven, three, seven. And Amerix, for example, is showing up with queen 10 and spades. I would have not caught it, but you see that queen 10 and spades is actually not such a bad bluff catcher. We are not bluffing with king, queen, spades, queen, jack, spades, right? Remember, we, we don't want to bluff though, be bluffing with those combos. But with queen 10 um, or pocket queens, we block ace queen, which is one of our clearest value bets. You block ace 10, you block uh, pocket tens, right? So like queen 10 in spades is, for example, a better bluff catch than ace deuce in hearts, right? Or ace four in hearts. Um, yeah, with ace four, you block some of our value bets with ace jack, ace queen, um, and ace 10. But with queen 10, you block also ace queen, of course. And additionally, you block the ace 10. And you also block pocket tens. So I think, and the, the queen doesn't really matter. We're not bluffing a lot with the queen. So it's not such a big of a difference, but just as a, um, as a, as an additional input, because I guess if I would ask the question, what do we do with queen 10 spades here? Uh, we might have just instantaneously thought that we would snap forward that combo but it's definitely debatable against some wrecks that barrel off here with their nine eights and drag nines and six fives and then they also add in some king jacks and, and queen jacks then queen ten is, is a reasonable bluff catcher here on the river let's look into a third spot that i have prepared for today this time it's against big blind so we are playing cutoff hijack mp uh, versus big blind. So on this board, um, so this is our out of position defending range. Uh, this is our in position range. Uh, so this is more like MP ish early position. And we get Jack 10, six, we are hundred big blinds deep. And yeah, I think six pot sizes is, is very good. Even over bet is probably uh, good here. But I think majority still bets like this two third, three quarter, even one third. So let's go with three quarters. We call, turn as a brick. And I think especially playing bricks is quite difficult sometimes. Uh, we go for a pot size bet on the churn, call, and let's take the six and diamonds. And then we, what hands are we bluffing? You see the same principle here again. Uh, the nine eights want to bluff, no spades. Uh, something like king nine, king eight. King nine actually seems to want to be checking back. Um, but if we opted to barrel a king eight, we want to continue with that combo. Yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any topic that you would like to see. I mean, I'm collecting all of them. I can't make videos about everything, but I try to see what's the most requested. And if you do like it, don't forget to literally smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you're not missing out on any any more content we had just had it recently where i was providing the opportunity for a free coaching session with people that had hit rock bottom i got i think close to 100 more applications after i made another video about updating about that coaching session and people are like i missed that sorry i didn't see that youtube video well you're bad if you don't subscribe 
then you miss out on epic content, epic opportunities for your poker journey and also maybe for your um, personal life. I hope, of course, always that what I'm trying to teach in poker that will also inspire you in your everyday life, in your business, in your relationships. Um, so see you guys next time. And again, don't forget to subscribe and like. Bye-bye.